A different type of Saturday for the Crestview Knights. Before the girls played in the district title game tonight at Lima Senior against Lipsick, they had to go to school. Not just meet at school, but go to school, go to classes, open books, you know, learn. Well, thanks to the bad weather this winter, Crestview resorting to Saturday school. Knights ready to go, but without junior guard Kenneth Mercer, injured in the win Thursday over Pandora Gilball. First quarter, Lipsick comes out firing. Skip pass to Shaylin Mormon. Eyes at Plaza. Three is good. Vikings grab a 7 0 lead, leading to a Knights timeout. Second quarter action now. Vikings Haley Gert over to Kelly Nother inside to Ammon. Three point lead for Knights start to find the Motique. Emily Bauer, the hoop, and brings Kreff in one to go in the half. Motique backs. Turn around on the mark. Nice first lead. Game board be this time down the floor. Viking Gurton, the left. Lipsick up at the half. Third quarter action now. Knights McKenzie Rigginbaugh to Motika. Hits the corner jumper to give the Knights the one point lead. She is fired up. The Vikings again find an answer as they find the cutting Nodler for the land. Lipsick back in front by one. Seesaw continues late in the third. Rigginbach to Bauer. Gets the bucket. 26 24 late in the third quarter, but Gurton. Plays beat the buzzer and wins off glass. 27-26, Lipsick ahead going into the fourth quarter. But the Knights pull away. Up by one, Riggenbaugh shot deflected. Bauer is there. Gets the basket and the foul. 31-27, Crestview in front. The students start to chant, get the scissors, as the Knights put it away. But the Vikings, one last comeback. Mormon on the fast break. Gets the land to bring Lipsick within three, but that's as close as they would get. Knights would make enough of their free throws down the stretch as they win. 41-33, a defensive battle for the Knights, but that was all part of the game plan to get back to the regionals. It's, in this area, it's just so hard to get there. You know, we were just telling the girls that it's been five years since we've been to the regionals already, so yeah, it doesn't get old. It's always a great feeling. It feels great. We got here last year, and it, it just feels great to get past this. Um, yeah, it was kind of scary at times, but we knew that if we played together as a team, we could pull through. Uh, we kind of had a slow start, you know, giving them seven points, and with their size inside, and some perimeter shooters, you know, we were really worried about what they were going to do, you know, attacking us in the paint. Uh, we went some zone, they still got it inside. Uh, I thought our man-to-man -man did a great job giving up some inches. I thought our post play and our guards, you know, covering the perimeter, you know, they stepped up and, you know, it's a great defensive effort all the way around. Yes, but it also helped pass the time on waiting for this game. That's always the hard part, is waiting to come play at 7 o'clock at night. Probably maybe a good thing. Didn't really have time to think about it, being at school, but uh, it's been a long day. I think the girls are tired, but it's a good tired. We got time to rest here until Thursday. And they will rest to take on Holgate Thursday night at 8 o'clock, the second game from the Elida Fieldhouse as Holgate defeats Ayersville tonight, 51-47. Meanwhile, the top half of that bracket, Carey gets the win over Arcadia by three, and New Regal over South Central, 64-28. So it'll be Carey, New Regal, Crestview, and Holgate at the Fieldhouse next week.